Hi, friends. I'm Pastor Jack Mantrick, pastor of Central United Methodist Church right here in Waterford, Michigan. Um, we are talking about our mission statement. We just finished this past week the final, the third and final uh, message about our mission statement. And uh, I'm going to return to the scripture that I read uh, both on Monday and Tuesday and talk a little bit about uh, what it means to be a witness. So I'm going to read again from um, the book of uh, Acts, the very first eight chapters of the book of Acts. Let's hear these words again. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the time or times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to, in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I want to look at that very last verse. I will repeat it to you one more time and may God add the blessing of hearing and reading this word. He says, but you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So I want I to look at that one word, witnesses. What does it mean to be a witness? Well, you know, don't think, overthink it too much. But if you think of those old uh, uh, movies that you watch, uh, uh, the, all about courtroom proceedings, if you, if you remember the, your Perry Mason uh, 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 shows that you watch, watch. I used to watch Perry Mason uh, after school <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, a witness is simply one who tells what he or she has seen and experienced. So we are, Jesus says, to be witnesses for him in Judea, in Jerusalem, Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And the imagery that, that I shared on Sunday is if you drop a, a drop of water into water, if you drop a drop of water into a body of water that is still, like if you have a bowl that of still water, you drop a water in it, what does it do? It creates ripples that, that emanate from that place where the drop of water hit that water. So we are an ever-expanding influence uh, upon the earth. And that influence starts in our own backyard. For Jesus, he was talking about Jerusalem, which is in Judea, the northern part of Israel. And, uh, and, and no, excuse me, the southern part of Israel. And, and it's spreading from Judea. And then to Samaria, which is really interesting because Samaria is people who are not like the Jews, Actually, they are like the Jews. They just have a disagreement and uh, <laughs> from the same region and area. Um, and uh, But they have differences and they hated each other. Uh, hence the, the, the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan, because it's such a surprise that this terrible person who, from Samaria would be, turn out to be the, the hero of Jesus' parable. But uh, so, so then we're, we're expanding to people that we do not know, people that are unlike us, and then to the ends of the earth. So for us, you know, we are to make changes in our own neighborhood, in our region, uh, further out. Uh, perhaps, uh, uh, you know, when we take our uh, annual trip uh, for the uh, Transformation Day um, and Witnessing Day uh, out in, um, in Lansing, we're, you know, we're expanding that territory. When we go to mission trips, uh, you know, in other states, Expanding our, our influence to the ends of the earth. Think of our uh, ministries that uh, we are a part of in Kakata, uh, Liberia. Think about uh, the money that gets uh, spent by our denominational giving for missionaries around the world. So we have this ever-expanding sphere of influence, but it begins here at home. 
And what does witness mean? But to only share what we know. People say, oh, I can't, I can't speak about my faith with others. Well, don't think about it as you know, speaking about your faith. All you have to do is witness. And all you have to witness to is the change that you have uh, made in your life because of Jesus Christ. So you are here. Uh, you, you speak about uh, yourself, uh, you know, how were, what kind of person were you before you became a Christian? Now, if you're like me, I grew up in the church. I <laughs> have been accused of being a goody two-shoe. <laughs> that, that uh, you know, I, I grew up in the church. But there was a time when I had to make the decision to live my life more fully for Christ. And, uh, you know, and, and, and to follow Christ. We all have to make that decision. And like I, like I often say, our faith is a moment of decision and a lifetime of living it out. It's a moment and a lifetime. So what can you witness to? I know that when I followed uh, Jesus Christ's offering to me, to, to uh, his call upon my life to be a pastor, and I did not want to be a pastor. I went to college to be a medical doctor and uh, did not end up being a medical doctor. <laughs> I was called by uh, God to be a pastor. I followed uh, God's leading and I was skeptical of it. I did not want to uh, uh, live that life. I wanted to uh, um, make a lot of money. I wanted to um, help people medically. I, I, you know, I had some good motives, uh, but uh, uh, Christ took a hold of my heart and I became a pastor. And uh, 40 years now <laughs> into it, um, and I have been blessed beyond my imagination. God delivered to, into my uh, heart and into my life a wonderful woman, my wife Ruth. We've had four uh, great kids. Um, each of them uh, have gifts and graces that uh, I can appreciate. Uh, we have a son who's a pastor. Uh, we have children who are very active in their churches. It's, uh, it's been a great and wonderful life. Didn't get rich, but we are certainly blessed. We are not, never gone hungry. Uh, we've uh, been blessed enough to uh, provide for our retirement uh, uh, in the, when the day comes. Not soon, but the day's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it's just a really wonderful, wonderful blessing. Uh, and I hope that's a great witness for you. Uh, and that's what I can witness because I know it to be the truth. You have a truth. You have ways in which your life has changed because of your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. What do you know to be true in your life? It might be simple, something simple as, you know, you had a, a rocky relationship perhaps with a sibling and you made peace with that sibling because your heart uh, was bruised and you, uh, with the love of Christ, forgave that sibling and re restored the relationship. And that's a witness to what God can do in your life. I've seen marriages healed um, from infidelity. Uh, and, and to be clear, sexual infidelity, it's hard to forgive somebody when they've, you know, when they've said their wedding vows. And they broke those vows in hurtful and tremendously uh, devastating ways. But I've seen marriages healed, even from the, that difficulty, that level of betrayal. God can restore. God can renew. God can refresh our lives in wondrous ways. And so what can you witness to? Maybe it's just a feeling that you get every Sunday when you come and sing a hymn and just know that you feel better when you're in the midst of God's people. Witness to that then. <laughs> Witness to uh, the beauty of the earth uh, in the spring when the flowers push up through the dirt and, and become a, a, you know, reminders of, of, of the goodness of God's earth and the warmth that will come to that earth and uh, the beauty of the flowers and the green trees. Uh, you can, uh, if you appreciate winter like I do, that fresh fallen snow and how it lays a wonderful, beautiful blanket of white upon the earth. Witness to whatever you can. And uh, that's what it means to be a witness, to share what you know to be true in your life. We all can be witnesses for our God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for the ability to witness. 
Now give to us the opportunities to witness in the world today, tomorrow, and for the rest of our lives. Give to us the, the confidence and, and, and the courage to move forward as your witnesses in the world today. May it ever be so in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, friends, you have a great Thursday, and God bless you.